wax cylinder transcript sealed with a cicada husk, labeled the storybook. Cleopatra pulled a snake from the moon. She wrote it for 40 nights, eating men, soldiers, and children who cried when a breast was pulled from their mouths. The Knights Templar were birthed from an enormous witch enshrined by foundation stones. Napoleon's horse, Marengo, had a ribcage that could split open and eat other horses whole. After Bonaparte burned bridges, the stallion could still canter across the ghosts of them. The Murmur Stone is a library for such tales. It can only speak the truth, or so it says. Its presence demarcates a sacred boundary of the sculptor's will and influence, much as the pomerium outlined the border of Rome. It is a force of physics and myth intertwined. Emperors have been driven mad with its promises. The Mermistone seems primed to tell the tales of women and men, but these are not the histories I am interested in. I seek epics never scribed by person kind and the knowledge hidden in them. I wish to hear of the nameless silver scarab Goliath, who pulped insectoid maidens into mercury at the first stage of the sculptor. There are fables of worms endlessly burrowing across desolate lands, sludging in unison, charting pathways and inscribing memories for a mind too big to shroud a single sky. Still, the story I want to hear most eludes the murmur stone's mouth. I think it is because the question I ask is the question of a child. It is not what the sculptor wants, but why? <laughs> 